This example is going to look at determining the number of logic blocks necessary to implement a particular piece of digital logic in an FPGA. We're going to try to make this example generic enough that it could apply, or the general concepts could be applied to many different families and types of FPGAs, whether they're from Altera, Xilinx, uh, different generations, whatever the case might be. For this example, we're going to look at implementing a finite state machine in an FPGA and determining how many logic blocks we need. For this finite state machine, we have three state bits, and the next state logic for each of these bits is shown here on the left. And then we have two outputs, which are shown by the equations on the right. And so to start with, we're interested in how many logic blocks that have four input lookup tables plus a single flip-flop do we need. And so if we were to draw generically what this looks like, basically in each one of our logic blocks, we have a four input lookup table that we can use. And if we want, there is a flip-flop that we can feed this value into. And then we basically get to decide what are the inputs connected into this four input lookup table and what do we want to assign the output to. And so we're going to start with the state holding elements and the next state logic. And so to start with, we're gonna look at Q2. Looking at the equation for Q2, we see that the next value of Q2 is dependent only on Q1, Q0, and D. So we need three inputs. And a four input lookup table can implement any logic function of four or fewer inputs. So with only three inputs, we have this covered with a single lookup table. So we could attach Q1, Q0, and D to three of the inputs of this lookup table here. This would basically produce the next value of Q2 and then the flip-flop itself would hold the value of Q2. That takes care of the Q2 value. We could go to Q1, but that's a little bit more complex. So we're gonna go to Q0 next. And so if we look at Q0, it has four inputs, Q2, Q1, Q0, and N. So similar to Q2, we only need a single four input lookup table for this. So with a four input lookup table, we can attach Q2, Q1, Q0, and N to this, and then this would produce the next value of Q0, and then the flip-flop would hold the current value of Q0. And as an example, if we really wanted to show the interconnect of the FPGA would be taking the value of Q2 from the first logic block we had and feeding it into the second logic block for Q2. And similarly, the value of Q0 here would be feeding into Q0 for both of these logic blocks. I'm not going to show this for all the cases, but just to show you conceptually that the interconnect is taking care of bringing these inputs into the different logic elements or the logic blocks. So now that takes care of Q0. The last piece of the next state logic is Q1. If we look at Q1, we see that it needs a total of five inputs, the three state bits as well as D and N. And so with a four input lookup table, we can't implement a function of five inputs. And so we need to break this up into multiple for input lookup tables. And there is a generic way where we could do this that would be regardless of what type of function we have, and we would need a total of three logic blocks for this. But in this particular case, we can do this in fewer than three logic blocks. So just to write this out, we're gonna say that for Q1 star, we have five inputs, and so we're going to need to be more creative with this. And the way we can be more creative is by basically looking at the equation and seeing if we can kind of break it up into segments that need fewer inputs each. And so if we look at the first two terms in Q1 star, we see that they only need the values Q2, Q1, Q0, and D. So we could have kind of an intermediate value, which I'm gonna call Q1i, which is basically only the first two terms. And this only needs four inputs. And then the last term only needs three inputs, Q1, Q0, and N. So we could say that the final next value of Q1 is really either the intermediate value or with the last term here. And if we look at this in both of these equations, we only need four inputs. In the intermediate calculation, we need the three values of Q plus D. And in Q1 star, we need the intermediate value plus Q1, Q0, and N. So we can take care of both of these with a logic block that has four input lookup tables. 
And so if we were to draw this out, we could do the Q1 intermediate value first. So we're going to have our four input lookup table and it's going to produce the intermediate value here. And if you'll notice, I didn't put a flip-flop here because we only want combinational logic. We're not putting this intermediate value in any flip-flop. We then also need to connect the inputs here. So we need Q2, Q1, Q0, and D. And so that takes care of the intermediate value. And then we need to feed this intermediate value into another logic block to compute the final value of Q1. So we're going to draw out another logic block here that's got a four input lookup table and it's going to get the temporary value along with the three other inputs we need which is Q1, Q0, and N. This is going to produce the next value of Q1 which we're going to feed into a flip-flop to store the current value of Q1. And so now with this we have the three next state logic equations as well as state holding elements taken care of and now we want to look at the output logic and we have two different output bits to look at and i'm going to start with c so in the case of c it is only the value of q2 so we actually don't even need a logic block for this we can simply take the value that's coming out of this logic element here and we can assign it to wherever the c output is going to and so the interconnect would take care of getting that to its desired destination. For V, if we look at the equation, we see that we have three inputs, Q2, Q1, and Q0. And so like in many of the other cases, with four or fewer inputs, we need a single logic element to take care of this. So we can see we need, or say we need our four input lookup table here, and it's going to need the values from Q2, Q1, and Q0. And in this case, I will show that essentially abstractly the interconnect is feeding these values into each of these. And then since the output logic is only combinational logic, we're not making use of the flip-flop. And so this value would simply come out of this logic block and provide the value of V. And so in this case, if we had four inputs or logic elements with four input lookup tables, then this would mean we need a total of five logic blocks. And it is important to note that this is not because we have five equations. It just happens to work out that one of the equations needed two and another one didn't need any. In many FPGAs, especially more recent ones, the lookup tables that are in the logic blocks have more inputs. And so in this particular example, since the largest number of inputs any equation had was five, if we had logic or lookup tables that had five or more inputs, then we'd only need four logic blocks because for doing Q1, we wouldn't need to split this up over two logic blocks. We could simply do it all in one logic block and we still wouldn't need any logic block for the value of C. And so this shows how you can figure out how many resources you need in an FPGA to implement a particular piece of digital hardware.